Thank you, Woody, for a very optimistic uh, presentation. I must say that I'm starting to believe again in innovation in cyber. Maybe the variant approach can allow us to implement a new innovation, new products in a significantly shortened deployment scale. So now, without uh, further ado, I'd like to invite uh, the next speaker, uh, Dr. Dorit Dor of Checkpoint. Uh, Checkpoint uh, Software Technology is an amazing Israeli company. When you say IT security in Israel, you say Checkpoint. Once again, one of our uh, close partners, I've been working with uh, Dorit and her team uh, for several months on several projects, and we enjoy working together quite a lot. Uh, Dorit uh, manages all the product definition and development functions for both the enterprise and consumer divisions of the company. Her core responsibilities include leading the company's product management, research and development, and quality assurance initiatives from concept to delivery. She has had several pivotal roles in Checkpoint's R&D organization, and she has been instrumental to the organization's growth and managed many successful product releases. Dorit, please. That's really going to be terrible. There is no way to activate the mic? Ah, okay. Great. Excellent. Very good. So, uh, I've been in Checkpoint, this is my 20th year, and uh, I joined Checkpoint when we were 15 people. Uh, I, I can tell you that definitely these days the greatest needed innovation is to connect a, a computer to a, a, a presentation because with all the HDMI, VGA connectors, we went backwards and every presentation starts with a few minutes of confusion. So there are very basic innovations that are needed, but in this presentation, I'll try to look at cyber. In my role at Checkpoint, I meet uh, many, many customers, partners, uh, and I also meet many vendors, uh, small vendors such as startups that are trying to uh, innovate, uh, and uh, bigger vendors that have a whole space and are still trying to move fast within the space. And at Checkpoint, one of the key elements that, that we uh, think of when we talk about uh, cyber is uh, collaboration and uh, partnerships because we think it's, it's really a big problem. So I'll try to speak to the innovators in you and I'll try to move you from thinking about point innovation to understand the whole point in innovating and to present how can uh, bigger companies such as Checkpoint can help you uh, bring your innovation to market and how you could make your innovation uh, more successful through uh, collaborations, uh, such as collaborating with Checkpoint. Uh, so every, every presentation about, you know, cyber, etc. has to start with some slides about attacks. So this is the one slide and then we could move forward. So now let's speak about attackers. So uh, the attackers, they are sharing information, they are sharing ideas, they are sharing exploits. That, that one everybody knows. Uh, one of the advantages that the attackers have is that point innovation is really good for them. They only have to find a certain sequence of holes in order to make their attack successful. Uh, so uh, if they find these holes, uh, they create an attack, the attack succeeded, that's great. Uh, so point innovation is really great for attackers. The problem, however, is that this point innovation turns very quickly against the defenders, because if you, if you look at the uh, uh, attacks such as Stuxnet, very quickly after it's being published, maybe it was dormant for a few years and we didn't know about it, but from the moment it, it was published, the world learned about a few new zero-day events, 
with few new attack methods that in one moment turned from being a nation-grade attack to a script kiddie thing that everyone can activate, to an open source attack on the wire. This doesn't help happen with other technologies. In other technologies such as nuclear plants, even if everybody knows about nuclear plants because of the nations, it's very hard to turn it into a script greedy uh, kind of nuclear uh, plant. But in cyber, it really turns to be an open source attack very quickly. And so, unfortunately, everybody, the nations, are accelerating the, the problem and, uh, and the need for defense. That doesn't mean that they can stop doing what they, what they do, because that's part of how you do a war. But we have to acknowledge that, and we have to run faster in order to address, because everything that's invented nationwide is very quickly becoming our immediate commercial and even consumer problem. A um, few uh, months back, there was a checkpoint event. We invited Michael Morell, who was a uh, deputy ch uh, chief uh, CIA. I hope I don't, uh, I'm not mistaken with the title. And he said that if we knew everything he knew, then we wouldn't even connect the toasters to the network. Uh, so, let's look at the problem and the needed innovation. So, we have next generation of malware, that's great, everybody knows that. The malware is hidden, the malware is polymorphic, and the malware is very sophisticated. Uh, so we have that, that calls for innovation, right? So, let's identify unknown malware. That's, that's a problem, that's a solution. Now, the problem with point innovation is that people approach it as, okay, we look at a certain type of malware, certain type of behavior, we identify them. They are even successfully, each of these point innovation can successfully show how they find three malwares that nobody else found and can, and can you know, identify and alert about them. That doesn't really help the customer because if every company shows three, and he needs to protect against all malware, what does he do? You know, how does it turn into being a solution? And even if there was one company that would say, you know, I know everything about malware and I'll solve all the malware problem, there comes sophisticated attack that are non-malware. And how do you do sophisticated attack that are non-malware? You start with, for example, identity, um, you, you move around lateral movement, it's being called in the organization, you go from one point to another, and you attack the whole organization without having malware. So by creating to every attack a solution, we get to a place where there are many point innovations that are very hard to prove. Um, there is a forest, there are trees, but it's very hard at the end to see the picture. The customer has to see a very clear picture. He can't see this clear picture with many products and he can't afford to implement all these products. To the vendors, it's the same problem. They are not being noticed. If you walk in RSA these days, RSA is one of the biggest conferences and all the companies show there, if you go from booth to booth, they all have the same message. It's very hard to highlight yourself. It's very hard to prove that you have something that is completely different than the others. So we need a little bit different things and, and it starts with the customer. What is the customer problem? So even if we were able to show the customer that he has a problem, then he needs to fix it and he's not sure how to fix it. But the, really the customer problem is that he, he, the customer in most cases doesn't work for security. The customer has a business. Maybe the customer sells shoes, maybe the customer has a successful uh, pharmacy or whatever. They don't deal with security, they have their other business to take care of and, and they want solutions that will help them have peace of mind, that will help them resolve a whole family and create a defense system uh, where they could focus on the rest of the business. And the defense system has to follow some operational guidelines so it will be deployable. And as said before, the first problem for the vendors is to be noticeable by the customers because they're so busy, they would not even notice the vendors in this situation. So from one of the researches that we've done, um, we've learned that even if we told customers that they have a bot on-premise, um, and we went, for them, we went to them after a while, 
they didn't fix the bot. They don't know what to do about it. Maybe they fixed it for a while, it came back, but in many, many cases, they simply don't know how to approach it, they lack the tools. That means that we still do need innovation, because the problem is really not solved. But we need to think about innovation, not as just point innovation and everybody shouts, oh, here is a new type of attack, here is a new type of malware. We need something a little bit more comprehensive, something that will help customer resolve the challenge. One example that I am bringing, only one example from Checkpoint, is the CPU level uh, uh, protection uh, that uh, I, I want to uh, tell you a little bit about for a few uh, seconds. Uh, this is a method to identify exploit by looking at the behavior of the exploit on the CPU. So outside of the operating system, you look at what the CPU does. By looking at the CPU, you could identify a whole family of exploits. And the exploit phase is a narrow phase during the attack. Um, now I go back to uh, the first presenter of the panel. So the first presenter of the panel showed few tools that became standard ways of defense in system, like ASLR. And yes, ASLR is a standard defense that created a situation that attack is more difficult. If in the past we would find a buffer overrun, we will overrun the buffer and just implement our code. This is no longer possible because ASLR and other protections. So now the exploit phase became very narrow. Uh, and if the exploit phase is very narrow, now we have an opportunity to identify the exploit on this very narrow phase. Generally speaking, one of the problems is that after we solve one problem, we are kept with the problems that are coming after it. So we need yet another point innovation and another point innovation. And that's one of the challenges that we have. But with this technology, we are able to identify all the uh, newest exploits thanks to the ASLR narrowness of the exploit phase. It's fast, so it helps us in prevention and not just in detection, because we operate fast. And the last advantage is that it plugs into a whole architecture and it's part of the full solution and it's not just something isolated that the customer has to uh, operate. In this case, it's part of a sandbox that he could plug into the environment uh, from any uh, gateway he has. And I'll, I'll talk about the architecture in the second. Um, so, before I move to the architecture and needs, I, I want to point out that if we look at the solutions that customers are implementing, a very small part of the money goes to these point solutions. And, and you know, the innovators, if you look at the number of startups around the world, each of them take you know, one of these point solutions. But at the end, there is a lot of money in the security space, and not a lot is being spent on these point solutions because it's very hard to implement them, and it's very hard to fit them into a whole bigger picture. So actually, if we want to innovate, we need to innovate across this space, or we could innovate in the smaller cycle, but create it in a way that it's connected to the bigger cycle. Uh, so there is a problem. The customers are seeing a bigger problem, but are not being able to address it. And we could think that creative thinking is a way to look at the same problem and to do something different. That could mean one of two things. We could wait for a, like a moment of uh, spirit and, uh, and wait for something that we will say we have X and X solve everything. Maybe there will be such X. I don't know of such X today. I know many attackers um, and uh, I know that they are doing everything they can on every X to find an anti-X. So I think it will continue to be a battle. So the better way to think differently about the problem is to think about the system and how you could live within an ecosystem and how you could serve the customer there. And so my last two points will be how Checkpoint bring a platform that you could collaborate on top of, but this is uh, working with Checkpoint or working with Checkpoint as example for other larger customers. So everyone, every example I'll give could, could be served for working with us because we are trying to collaborate with all the solutions out there. Or it could be an example of how you could collaborate also with other architecture and technologies. So when we come to a customer, first question the customer asks us is, what would I do about this security? How would I implement it? Um, and we, we've had this discussion with many customers to the point 
that we realized that we have to present a proposal of an architecture to them. And we came with this proposal of software-defined protection that have a, um, an enforcement layer, that have a control layer and a management layer. And each layer, we created the plugins and, and explain how it connects to the environments and to the other solutions. When we come to the customer and we picture such an architecture, and if the customer bought our architecture, if you are now an innovator, you need to know how to live in this environment. So this is our proposal to the customers and they find it very useful. But wherever you go as an innovator, you need to find out what is the architecture of security the customer has implemented and to live with that environment. The other opportunity for collaboration and for thinking about the problem as a whole is actually in the threat intelligence that we have. So uh, we have uh, a very uh, strong capability it's called Threat Cloud, where we get information from gateways, from endpoints, from mobiles. Uh, we have sensors out there. We have uh, analysts and researcher with automatic tools and uh, manual tools that look at this data. And we operate this um, for our purpose with our intelligence. But in the same way, we could collaborate with other vendors, and we do collaborate with startup, with other you know, innovation companies, in order to use the same infrastructure, whether it's in a manual way or in automated way, to plug in everything to the same environment and to protect the customer at the end. So I presented two forms of collaboration and of thinking about the system in a way that will bring something that is more than a point solution to the customer. So yes, you could wait for a moment of aha and find a solution without an anti-X for it. Or you could look at security architecture and look at how you could collaborate with other intelligence, with other protection environments, and create an holistic solution for the customer. Thank you.